I promised my subscribers that I would be honest about any mistakes I made when building my smart home, and to come clean if something I made a video about turned to be wrong or misleading. This is one of those videos. Almost exactly a year ago, in June 2023, I made a video called Easy WLED, which showed how I used a Quinlead Dig Uno controller to wire up some individually addressable LED strips to the back of my monitor. Well, since then, all of those LED strips have fallen off, and I found not one, but two ways that are even easier than using a Dig Uno controller. I now use these newer methods in all the small scale WLED accent lighting around my house, and in this video, I'm going to show you what they are, and I'll also show you why the strips fell off and what I did to fix that. Let's take a look. Now don't get me wrong, the Digino controller is really practical, and I still use it to control larger runs of individually addressable LED strips around my house. What I like most about it is the built-in power management and the fusing, which makes it possible to run these longer runs of LED strips and use power injection while preventing your house from burning down. Unfortunately though, it's a bit of a faff, because you need to buy a dedicated power supply for it, and wire in all the cabling, and then all the circuitry is exposed, which means you risk blowing it up if it gets wet, or the contact short circuit because it's touched some metal or something. In my opinion, this makes it a bit overkill for smaller WLED installations, like the lights behind my monitor, or these here behind my drawers, and a few other accent lights that I have around my house, like these houseplant lights. Basically, anything under a couple of meters of strip, depending of course on how many LEDs are on it and what effects you're looking to run. For these smaller sections of accent lighting, I now use a smaller plug and play WLED controller. The one here on the left is also from Quinlead and is known as a Dig to Go, whilst the one on the right here is from SM Light. These are the same people who make my power over Ethernet Zigbee adapter that I made a previous video about. It's called the A1 SLWF03. Since I was already paying for shipping when I ordered the Zigbee adapter, I decided to pick up one of their WLED controllers at the same time to have a play with. Both of these are tiny controllers, and they come pre-installed with WLED and are almost plug and play. The Dig2Go comes with everything you need to plug a standard SK6812 or WS2812 LED strip into it via this handy connector cable. And you can also buy it with a 3 amp USB-C power adapter, and it costs around $35 US all up. The SM Light controller costs about half that, but it doesn't come with a connector cable or a power supply. You'll need to use some sort of USB-C power adapter that you probably already have lying around your house. It does, however, come with this teeny tiny screwdriver so that you can wire up the LED strips to the included terminals. But this is the downside to this controller in my opinion. The screw terminals are really small and fiddly, which makes it difficult or impossible to connect thicker gauge wires. Both of these controllers do the job well, and they're pretty similar to be honest. Both run ESP32s inside to power WLED. Both have a built-in microphone, so you can use the sound reactive version of WLED to make really cool effects to your music, kind of like Winamp back in the day. Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. Both have an infrared receiver, so you can control them with some sort of remote control, and both have external I.O. ports exposed for adding extra thingies to it. I personally don't know what you would want to add, but you can add things if you want to. Setting them up is also very similar. Once you've connected your LED strips and plugged them into the power, it will start broadcasting the WLED Wi-Fi connection. You can then connect to this Wi-Fi network using the default password, which is WLED1234 or lowercase. Once you're connected to it, it should take you to the configuration page. If it doesn't, just open up a web browser and navigate to the IP address 4.3.2.1. Here, you can enter your home Wi-Fi details to add it to your network, and set up the LED strip preferences, such as the type of strip you have, and the number of LEDs on it. For more information about setting up WLED, you can check out the documentation, or you can check out my previous beginner's guide video. Both of these are linked in the description below. Both of these controllers were automatically and immediately detected by Home Assistant as well, which was pretty nice. Personally, I prefer the dig to go controller. It comes with everything you need in the box, and the three-wire connector cable that it comes with makes it much easier to connect any kind of LED strip. I've now got these controllers running all over my house, and they've been really great with all sorts of different LED strip types. 
I even replaced the Digino behind my monitors with one of these Dig to Go's. The SM Lite controller is fine, but there are so many better controllers on the market. Would you like a comprehensive review of all the different types of entry level WLED controllers that are available on the market today? Then you should definitely check out this video made by Aaron from the Make It Work YouTube channel. The day before I went to record this video, he dropped a fantastic comparison video of his own where he looks at about a dozen different controllers in great detail and takes them through all their paces. His channel is full of awesome content like this, so you should definitely go and check it out and subscribe to his channel. I've linked to his video in the description below as well. Now, back to the original problem at hand, which started this whole learning journey to begin with. When I originally put up the LED strips behind my monitors, I naively used the sticky backing that came attached to the back of the LED strips. Unfortunately, this adhesive is pretty shitty, and the backs of my monitors get quite hot when they're on, so they started to peel and fall off. I did some research and learned that 3M have a range of double-sided tape called VHB, which stands for Very High Bond. This is heat and weather resistant and really sticky, but be careful, once it's on, it's very difficult to get off, so don't put it somewhere where you want to have a temporary fix. You need to use some sort of special adhesive remover to get the strips off. To fix my monitor setup, I pulled the old Digino controller and went to work re-sticking all of the LED strips back up using this new VHB tape. I then cleaned the area of the monitor where I wanted to stick my controller with isopropyl alcohol, wired up the Dig2Go controller, and reattached it using the same VHB tape. Et voila! Problem solved, and I learned about a whole new category of entry-level WLED controllers. If you found this video useful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I'm going to be making more of these lessons learned videos as there are a few other things that have annoyed me or stopped working properly on my smart home and they need to be replaced. If you want to know when those new videos are uploaded, hit the subscribe button below and then together we can make your home smarter.